Hey guys, in this video I'm going to finish going over how to fix a bad skull strip. So this will probably be the last video in this little series. So in the last video we talked about how to manually edit the brain mask, but I said in the video that if your brain has a lot of errors, it might take a long time if you just try to fix them manually. So fixing a bad skull strip can take over an hour if you just go into it from the automatically produced brain mask. So FreeSurfer has a couple of commands that you can try to run to fix the brain mask before you do any manual edits. And so if you think your brain mask has a lot of errors, I would recommend first that you try the commands, then look at the brain mask that was produced by these commands, and then if there's still problems, I would do manual edits on those brain masks. So if you think it, you have a large problem, I would try a couple commands to fix it first and then do manual edits. So like I said in the previous videos, there are basically two main problems. You can either have too much non-brain tissue left behind on the skull strip, or you can have a skull strip that removed part of the brain. So the first command I'll go over in this video is the G-cut command, and this is a command that you use if you have too much non-brain tissue left over in your brain mask. So as you can see here, a lot of dura matter and a lot of non-brain tissue can be left behind, and G-cut basically removes this by doing a more aggressive skull strip. Now the reason G-cut is not part of the automatically run commands in the auto recon stream is that it sometimes has a tendency of being overly aggressive. So you'll see when we run this command in this video that every time you run the G-cut command, it'll give you a little warning text that tells you that part of the brain might have been cut out when you used G-cut. So if you use the G-cut command, basically what you want to do is you want to check the brain mask after it finishes running to make sure that no part of the actual brain tissue was removed. And if it was, then you can manually edit and put that back. Okay, so I updated the code that I have publicly available and I'll put all the same links to everything in the description box below and I also have a research paper that talks about G-cuts, which stands for graph cuts, and this goes over, I guess, the algorithm of how G-cut works, if you're interested in learning about that. So let's go ahead and try to run this command. So I put the fix using G-cut code here. Okay, so to use G-cut, we type in recon all skull strip clean dash bm G-cut and then the name of the subject ID folder. You click enter and that will run. It shouldn't take too long to run, just maybe a couple of minutes. And so for this computer, it took less than a minute to run and it lets you know that it finished without error. Something else that I do want to mention is that sometimes I've tried to use the G-cut command and it actually fails. So it fails sometimes when it thinks it cut out too much of the brain and it will tell you in a text right around here, usually the last line before this dash line, and it will say that the G-cut command cut out too much of the brain and instead of producing a gcuts.mgz file, it's just going to use the brainmask.mgz file. It will tell you to just use the brain mask file that's automatically produced, but in this case it did successfully produce a gcuts file. So you can go to your subjects folder and then your MRI folder and you will see that there's now a gcuts file produced and it will also update your brain mask file. So if you click the gcuts file it will show you the additional non-brain tissue that has been cut out. And let me also show you the warning text. So if you read the little info box here, it says, care must be taken to thoroughly inspect your data. In particular, inspect the edges of the gray matter and cerebellum for over aggressive cutting. So it does warn you that you wanna check for false negative parts of the brain that were actual brain tissue that might've been removed. So to view G-cut results, if you want to view it like this, where you have a red border of what G-cut removed, then you can use this first line. So that's tkmedit, then the subject folder name, t1.mgz, segmentation, brainmask.gcuts.mgz. 
Okay, so that opens TK Minute, and this is a good way to view the gcut command because if you're going to go back and manually edit, if you think that gcut took away some brain tissue, then you can cycle through here and see what gcut cut out, and it's a good way of seeing where you have to go back in to fill in brain tissue, if anywhere. So I'm just going to switch to the sagittal view and look at it this way. So down here, for example, it might have cut out a little bit of the cerebellum. It looks like it might have cut out some of the bottom brain here. And maybe some brain here, I'm not sure about that. So that's one way of viewing it, and then you can also just view the brain mask that was altered. So you can do TK Minute, BTC, and then brainmask.mgz. And you can see that a lot of the dura matter is removed now. If you read the graph cuts paper that I showed before, it says that it removes about 10 to 30 percent more dura matter than the normal recon all does. So I think that looks pretty good. You can go back in and like I said in the beginning of the video, it's recommended that you go back in and do some manual edits, but it should be a lot faster because if you look at this brain mask, it looks pretty good. Okay, so that's G-Cut, and then the last thing I'll show in this video is how to change the watershed parameters. So the technique that FreeSurfer uses to get a skull strip is called a hybrid watershed algorithm, which is basically based on doing an inversion of the intensities of the brain and looking for the separation between the brain and CSF. The separation is based on something called a pre-flooding height, which the default value for the pre-flood height is 25, which stands for 25%. So it says here, if you think that too much of the brain was removed, you want to use a value larger than 25. And the opposite of that, if you think that not enough part of the brain was removed, you want to look at a lower number. This is the line of code that you would run if you know specifically what type of watershed parameter you want to use, in which case you put in the number here for the watershed tag. But if you read here, it says it's kind of arbitrary what value is the best. So on this page here, it talks about trying several thresholds at the same time. If you do that, there's a multi-strip tag that will automatically test 5, 10, 20, and 30 as the watershed thresholds, or there's a way of changing the set to whatever values you want. So if you go into, I usually use bash, but if you use CT shell, then you can use set environment, and these first two lines will give the path to your data, and then you can put in whatever values you want. So you can change the value here and then you run this last line which is the multi-strip command. So I'm just going to show you what the multi-strip tag will do and it will produce the default values so I'm not going to bother to change the values of the parameter. So if you do that it will be recon all multi-strip clean bm the name of the subject and no is running and that will just take a couple minutes to run as well. This one takes a little bit longer than the gcuts command because it's actually doing these uh, four different values on three different files. Okay, so that finished running and it took about four minutes. And now if you look at the MRI folder, there are 5, 10, 20, and 30 brain mask files for the brain mask new, the T1, and the original brain mask. So you can now look at the different outputs and this one does not look like it was very good, for example. And you can see what the different thresholds do to the brain mask and you can pick from those which one you want and you can also use that as a way to determine what type of thresholding you want to do for your data. Okay, so that's it for this video and thank you guys for watching.